Hello, I'm Dr. Tom McCauley from the University of Sheffield in the UK, um, and I work on Japanese medieval poetry and poetic criticism. Well, the poetry contest is a, a mixed occasion, um, an event which is for the competition or the, the composition and presentation of poetry, its criticism, and for forming the views of what appropriate poetic style and poetic poetics should be. To call them poetry contests is something of a misnomer, as um, the aristocracy of pre-modern Japan were fond of all different kinds of matching activities. So they loved to compare and contrast incense and paintings and shells and flowers and so forth. And sometimes poetry was a part of this and sometimes it wasn't. And sometimes poetry became the main thing which was actually matched and, compo and uh, compared and then judged. Um, so gradually the poetry competition, which first got started in the 880s at the very earlier stages, and at that point was mainly a social occasion for aristocrats to get together and admire each other's clothes and show off their wealth and uh, make nice comments about how beautifully the ladies were dressed and so forth. Um, morphed into more and more of a literary occasion where well-known poets would actually present their work um, and be formally judged and assessed by um, members of the aristocracy who were known as poets and were trusted to provide um, critical and appropriate judgments or sometimes just amusing judgments um, so that the assembled company could enjoy the conflict and disagreement between the different views of poetics which were expressed. The process of the poetry competition was that the teams um, who were participating were divided into the teams of the left and teams of the right. Um, and generally what would happen would be that the, a poet from the team of the left would present his poem um, and the poet from the team of the right would present his poem and then the left would comment on the right's poem, the right would comment on the left's poem and then a judge would provide their opinion about both poems together and assign either a win to one or other poem um, or a tie for the round. And ties could be assigned either because poems were both too good to be um, one to be judged the loser, or so poor, both so poor, that uh, neither deserved a win. The competitions will be judged by men of acknowledged poetic experience and authority. Um, as they became more literary competitions, um, well, they were still more sort of social occasions, then very they might very well be um, judged by the sponsor of the competition or an aristocrat of senior status who could therefore put the weight of their authority behind the approval of the different poems. Poetry was absolutely crucial to the way in which um, society functioned in um, pre-modern Japan. It was something that everyone did constantly. Um, it was how you expressed your feelings about um, the beautiful scene or your feelings of sorrow that someone's uh, friend had passed away or that someone had got married or someone had a child and so forth. So it was an integral part of life. And because it was so much an integral part of life and was valued by people of senior status, and particularly the imperial family and the emperors themselves, um, then being good at poetry essentially came to mean being good at the business of being an aristocrat. And so having one's poetry acknowledged and approved by one's social superiors or by one's equals um, was a way of gathering social and then sometimes even political status um, in the society of the time. If you were a, a junior poet, um, then while you might not be able to compete directly with people from the various highest echelons of society. Um, you might be get, up, get asked by a senior aristocrat to compose a, poet on, a poem on his behalf, and then um, it would be presented, but everyone would know, of course, that it was your work. Um, and that could lead to other requests for poems to be composed for particular, particular occasions, and so bring tangible economic rewards to junior poets. Um, 
if you did get to invite, be invited to take part in competitions where senior people were present, it was an occasion to get to know the people who were right at the top of society um, and therefore make contacts, network, and other social, cultural, political, economic benefits could flow from that. So it was an absolutely crucial activity for people invited to, to participate in them. So poetry was frequently written down and recorded, um, both for official and unofficial and personal and private and public purposes as well. So there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of poets of poems recorded, written down in various different types of collections. You had the most formal um, and public collections, the imperially sponsored poetry anthologies, which would have been copied and circulated widely. But almost anyone who is anyone um, would try their hand at personal anthologizing, putting together their own favorite collections of poems, which would be written down and passed around members of their family. Um, or if they were well-known poets, then they would compile their own poems together into collections which then could be passed on to members of their families, friends, um, social superiors as well, and given as gifts. So with all of these, this record keeping, there's an awful lot of documentary evidence of what these poems were. Well, I've worked on a poetry competition called the Rop Yakaban Utawase, the poetry contest in 600 rounds. Um, this is a really crucial contest for a whole range of reasons. First of all, it's one of the two largest contests um, which we have in complete form um, remaining. So it's important it, simply by virtue of its size. It's also important in that it was judged by um, a poet by the name of Fujiwara no Shunze. Now, Shunze was has been called probably the most accomplished critic in Japanese literary history. Um, and therefore, his views of poetry and poetics were extremely influential for centuries after his um, death. And some of the ways in which he um, judged poetry, the Ropyokan Utawase, have been shown to be influential on subsequent poetry competition judgments too. Ropyokan Utawase also took place at perhaps um, a, the pinnacle of um, court poetry in the sense that um, it was a period when um, we were beginning to see the development of factionalism and different poetic houses um, amongst the aristocrats in, in Kyoto. And not long after this competition actually took place, um, views, differing, diverging views on poetry became so extensive that it was impossible for people from different poetic houses to even talk to each other about poetry. But at this point, then we can see the differences in views in, in the way in which poetry ought to be composed, um, the themes and the ways in which were appropriate there. And we have Shunze as a figure of acknowledged authority, perhaps the last remaining figure of total authority, which everyone respected. Ropyakuman Utawase is what's known as a hyakushu um, utawase, in that the poets taking part were each presented with a list of 100 topics and asked to compose 100 poems on those 100 topics. Um, 50 of the topics were on seasonal, to um, seasonal um, subjects and 50 were on love. Many of the topics um, were extremely well trodden and very well known before. Um, others were completely novel and completely new and so posed additional challenges for poets to actually work with them because um, they had no precedent on, as to know how that should actually work. Um, the poets themselves who took part, and there were 12 of them, um, came from essentially three separate groups. Um, there were a number of men, young men, from the very pinnacle of the court hierarchy, including the competition sponsor, Fujiwara no Yoshitsune. Um, and then there were representatives of two separate poetic traditions. Um, very crudely, um, poetic conservatives and poetic modernizers. And one of Yoshitsune's main motivations for um, holding the competition, I think, was to show off the differences in approach between these two um, groups of poets with very different views about how poetry should be, be composed, what topics and what language were appropriate, um, as a way of creating a creative crucible for the further development of uh, um, waka at that time. Um, well, there were, by the time of um, 
Rock back up on Utawase. There were a number of key sort of critical criteria which were established for Utawase poems. Um, they had to address the topic correctly. And so different topics had different ideas about which emotional connotations should be appropriate for using them, which language should be appropriate for using them, and so forth. So Shunze and other poets will um, criticize the use of individual pieces of diction if they feel that it doesn't reflect um, the correct emotional tone or the correct message which is put across by key topics. Um, poetry had to be able to be understood when heard as opposed to when read um, as poetry was formally recited rather than being read as a primary activity. So there are comments made on how easy it is actually to understand particular poems, um, how they sound, what their phonology is like, um, they, whether they're euphonic or not, whether they're harmonious when, when they sound. Um, another key issue is that they had to be appropriately formal. Um, the Japanese term for that is hare. Now, that meant um, that they had to be avoid excessive displays of emotion. Um, they shouldn't be ex excessively personal. Um, one of the comments which is sometimes made is that some of some of the poems is that they too much re resemble laments over personal circumstances or appeals for um, promotion and things, um, and that's criticised as being too personal. Um, but equally, they had to reflect the world as it actually was, um, the, or the, the world as poetry understood it. So you couldn't talk about, um, for example, deer. If you raise the topic of deer in a, in a poem, they had to be sad. It had to be in reference to autumn. If there were, you hear deer calling from the forest, then uh, the deer is lamenting the fact that it hasn't got a mate and so forth. Um, so if you referenced a deer in a, any other kind of context in a poem, then your poem wouldn't work because it was a poor poem. So um, the, an understanding of um, the appropriate depiction of poetic reality was a key feature as well. Um, and so these are all the kinds of things which um, Shunze comments on it extensively. Um, there's also the question of appropriate uses of intertextuality, what types of poems or sources could be referred to as or mentioned as inspiration or to add additional connotations to the poetry which, which was composed. Um, the reason I decided to translate it is, well, I, to be purely um, personal about it, it was a labour of love, it was something that I really wanted to do because I it li liked the poetry. Um, and after reading the original judgments and the ways in which the, the views were expressed, um, en enjoyed that too. But I think there's an immense amount of material and available uh, in there for future scholars or current scholars of Waka. Um, we, of course, have 1,200 poems which um, have been composed in different ways and, and which can be analysed for themselves. We have the extensive judgments by Shunze expressing how um, he felt the poet, poet, different poems' strengths and weaknesses actually worked. Um, so we have views of aesthetics, we have views of criticism, we have views of, of poetry itself. Um, we have the comments by the participants too, of course, to add that in and to demonstrate the way in which um, criticism as an activity um, in Utawase was very often a collaborative process of different critics proposing different ideas and then views emerging from this. As you can hear, hear from my accent, I'm English, I'm British, um, and so I suspect they come out sounding rather British in, in the translation. Um, we'll see what people think of that as, the, as that voice for them. Um, obviously they were not British, they came from, uh, from, from Japan, but um, I, I hope that I have um, put their words into, uh, their original Japanese words, into a form which uh, reflects the tone, the style and the spirit of how they were writing and how they expressed themselves. Wow.
Oh, 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 oh. 